Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So we are now picking June's CBR, which feels crazy. It's currently the 30th of May as I'm reading, not as I'm reading this, Jesus Christ, as I am filming this. Um, so we are doing a wrapped up books. I did this last month um, and yeah, I wanted to do it again. So that's what we're going to do because I have 14 books wrapped up. So I opened up six last time. I'm going to open up six again just because I feel like that's a good number for me. Reasonable. I really, really hope to open up Hopeless by Elsie Silver. Currently I'm wearing a t-shirt which actually does have a cowboy boot on. Um, it was from Asda. Loved it. So cute. I've tried to find like a fun number picker. I'm currently screen recording so I will show that some that on the screen. Probably up here make sense to be up here because I figured it would make sense for it to be a nice little fun one um so we will see I unwrapped last month and honestly none of us want that um so let me hit record um and let me click start yeah literally it is a claw um grabber <laughs> volume um as you can see we got the number four um which also now means i can actually fit number 20 on this thing this is definitely on the wobble i don't know why probably because of how the wheels are or something i don't know but number four i i can't remember the name of this book i think this is a fantasy romance this feels like i think it's i think it's called the foxglove king i think um imagine if i'm right last month i correctly guessed i don't have it on me but i correctly guessed um things we never got over by lucy score so you know one that i actually guessed um so yeah what no I thought I was correct in terms of colouring. I'm not. I'm absolutely not. I have picked up Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I have wanted to read this for a while. This is Dark Academia. I know that the triggers are like heavy. I haven't looked into them. I've heard a little bit about them, but I kind of want to go half in blind because I feel like this could be, this is either going to be one that I really enjoy or one that I don't. Um, I don't think there's going to be any in between, um, but yeah. That is our first book. You know what? I find this thing more so so that it didn't look, I didn't look like disgusting. It was only like empty glasses, I will point out. Um, but yeah. So that is the first book. I don't know why I had it on my lap because honestly you guys, you can see what I'm seeing. Let's pick the next one. So that's book one. 20! The one that I have literally just... Jesus Christ. The one I have literally just moved from the top into this. Um, this feels like it could be the same size as Hopeless. But also so do all of my books. But it's not Hopeless. <laughs> like I've been excited to read this book. And it is the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. So as a Brit, I came across Richard Osman because of Pointless. Um, I really want to get to this book, especially more so since I saw a photo of my mum reading it, like having it on the table as the book that she's currently reading. Um, which you know what, I didn't expect. I don't think my mum goes into reading books lightly, unless my nana bought it. Um, so I kind of, I feel like I need to get to it. I do own the whole series, literally I own all of them. Um, so yeah, I need to get to them. This is quite nice actually, to be fair. So far we have a dark academia and we have a cozy murder mystery. Um, so this is like old people investigating a murder. Also, I don't know how I feel about like the six back cat. I feel both mature and also like bold. Um, I decided to sleep back my hair for work today and um, I both vibe with it and also in this video I'm like, yeah. 
So that's book number two. When I meant that was book number two, I obviously meant I've just done book number two, meaning we're doing book number three. Um, this is a chunker. Which also could mean it's the, fant the fantasy romance that I really want. Because this is too, way too thick to be hopeless. Way too thick. Um, and the goats. Why do I feel like I'm getting excited like at Christmas? Um, despite the fact that at Christmas I'm like, I want these books. Um, and my mum then goes and buys some of them. Which was quite literally the case at Christmas. Um, this is a YA sci-fi. Is it sci-fi? Yes. And it's to do with superheroes. So there's um, good people and bad, obviously. And there's a little bit of like a romance in it. Um, but I don't know too much about it. Um, but yeah, this is a chunky book. And also there's no like borders. And it's a good 550 50 pages kind of thing bit chunky but hey hey this is where i don't end up getting hopeless and i'm i really want it i so want it i so 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 want it number five two three five okay i'm not gonna even guess at this point and it's literally the fantasy romance that i wanted The Fox Club King. I literally guessed it. And this is, for UK standards, this is floppy. Like, this is half floppy. This, as I said, is fantasy romance. Um, it's gothic um, and darkly romantic. It's an epic, and it's the start of an epic fantasy series. I think the second one has only just come out, I think. Or it's, like, coming out in, like, a month or two. I can't remember. But I, I bought this when I was in Birmingham. And I was just doing a little exploring and I wanted to, at the time I wanted to pick up books that I hadn't heard of. So at the time I, I think I picked up Rootbound from Waterstones. Um, I know that it's currently now in the works, which is a bummer. I might have bought it from the works because I know I, I didn't end up getting anything from the works. So no, I did pay Waterstones prices for this. I do want to get to that at some point. It's like a um, small town cowboy romance. Is it a cowboy romance? Well, a small town at like a range. So yeah. Yeah, cowboy romance. Freaking know it. But yeah, so I bought those at the same time. And I wanted to pick books where I hadn't heard of them. So with Rootbound, I'd heard of the author, but I hadn't read anything from her. And I also hadn't actually seen any other books mentioned from her. Um, and then this one was a complete new one. Um, and it says, Law has been living by her wits since she was a child, running poisons for the cartel that took her in, avoiding the attention of the law and keeping her affinity for death magic a secret. Because mortem is a rare and illicit commodity and using it could mean death. When her job goes wrong, Law suddenly finds herself thrust into a lavish court where no one can be believed and even fewer can be trusted. There, Law must navigate an intricate web of politics, religion and forbidden romance to solve a mystery more dangerous and twisted than she can ever imagine. Um, yeah, this just sounded so good. Where the hell is my drink? Oh, it's up here. Um, yeah, because I did actually grab a drink. I was first captured by the fact that it said Fox Club, which I think part of me was, could just be because I'm like, ooh, like, so many people are reading, like, books with, like, flowers in or, like, the flower in the name, a flower, like, or plant in the name. So that's what made me pick it up and it, then I really liked the plot, like the um, blurb. The second book is called The Hemlock Queen. I know that hemlock is like a type of, it's to do with sewing and like sewing machines. Um, so I don't know whether it's gonna follow like a different thing. It is blurbed by Stephanie Garber, Ali Hazelwood, Josie Picoult, which I think she's, is she the author of Mad Honey? I haven't read that and I know that um, Sarah Destiny and um, Hayley didn't like it. Um, and then there's an author called Katie Roberts, who I've never heard of. Led by a few people, and it just looks so good. Um, I know I've been rambling on about this book, but I am really excited to get to this. Floppy on the floppier side. But there's only like 466 pages. I love how I said only. 
but it felt like the same kind of thickness as Renegades, which so that's what book four. Um, yeah, let's pick book five. You guys currently know what the book, what the number is before I do. Number seven. This is a thin one. What thin books did I put in here? Like this is proper thin because this would have been something that I'd expect as like yeeted the time as the book called the time I got drank and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf but it's not that. Oh god that was a book that had been bent slightly um and also it's not um this penguin modern classic book either which is even thinner what did i put jesus christ i can't even remember oh i put in carrie by stephen king um i've never actually read a stephen king book before um i've also never watched the movie i know that it's a horror this we have a jesus christ we have had a mix um, we also haven't had any romance, so it feels quite a heavy month, potentially. Carrie has the gift of telekinesis, and basically she'll move things with her mind. And that she wants to be socially accepted, um, but that horrifying events happen um, that leaves her as an outcast. But yeah, basically this is the 50th anniversary edition. I, part of the reason why I haven't read Stephen King is because I don't go into like Waterstones often. And so because of that, then unless I was to order them online, they're not as accessible. And actually online, when we're making purchases online, I'm more conscious of what I buy. And so I'm not going to buy a Stephen King when I don't know whether I'm like gonna like it. But this was in like Asda or Tesco, I think it was. Um, but yeah, I should have known, I should have known. But I also did this like over a month, like a month ago at this point. Oh, there's a bit of mixed media. And there's like 242 pages. The text is, the text is a good size as well. I do own another Stephen King book. I don't know whereabouts it is, but I do have, I think it's Fairy Tale. Yeah, I think it's Fairy Tale, um, which I know is like more of his like fantasy-esque thing. I have read something horror, but it was like a short thing, which to be fair, that's a short thing anyway. So it's a little bit of a nice like range in terms of colours. Although I wanted to pick six, if this next one isn't a romance, I'm going to continue until I get to romance. I want a romance at this point. Um, let's move all of these along. So you, I know you guys can see them, but it makes it easier for me to... Oh, of course one would just go against me. <sighs> 19, which is the one at the end that literally betrayed me. <sighs> this doesn't feel like hopeless at all. Oh, it's upside down. This is the devil's... No. No. There isn't even a the in it. It's this is Devil's Breath by Jill Johnston. Um, I picked this up recently actually. Again, how many pages is this? Let's say three hundred. But it is also smaller text. Um, yeah, two hundred and ninety-two. So the, this is basically about a professor of botanical toxicology, um, who lives with a collection of poisonous plants. She lives a the same routine each day um and then someone dies there's like a neighbor and people visiting this neighbor and she recognizes one of them um and then she's her garden's vandalized and someone is murdered with a toxin from a poisonous plant um and basically it kind of sounds like a murder mystery with like botany we're going to a romance at this point sorry but we're going to a romance because there are 
there is a mixture of romances in there um I did. I really got it! Um, Hopeless by LC Silver. It's the one romance that I wanted out of this list. I have no clue what's in here at all. Um, how many is in here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I think that I think that worked quite well because I'll just open all seven next month. Um, Hopeless by LC Silver. This follows by Eaton. So this is the final book in the Chestnut Spring series. I really wanted to get to this book because then that way I can get to Wild Love. Um, it's going to torture me for the next two days, um, day and a half, as I see this on my shelf. And also I work on the first as well. I'm literally at work on the first um, and for the first half of the second. I will be starting this at the end of the first. Like absolutely but yeah so i don't I, although i wanted to pick this up i don't have like i don't go with high expectations i don't with any book um i know that this is an age gap there is a 13 year age gap um and this is like a fake engaged trope um yeah and basically obviously we know bio is from the eaton family he was in the military um and then the bar our tender we actually did meet in the first book um who and she is the good egg from a bad family i know that so many people going to, into this book were so excited because they wanted to learn more about what went on in his military career military career because he couldn't talk about it um and i know we do get insights into this um but i'm not going in with like expectations of finding out like this man's deep dark secrets do you know what I mean? That is the seven books that we have. So we have Knight's House, The Thursday Murder Club, Renegades, The Foxglove King, Carrie, Devil's Breath, and Hopeless. I, spoiler alert, you probably already seen my wrap up before this video. Didn't do the greatest in terms of my May TBR, but I have a good feeling about this one. I have a freaking good feeling. Like, I'm sorry, but one at least is getting read and the Thursday Murder Club I feel like is on like my higher priority so it's been bugging me that I've not been able to open some of these books and just read them I know I have too many books and I did buy more this month and I literally bought another one today I know I'm so sorry I don't have it with me I think it's called the North Wind or something not to be confused with North Face but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what, how you want me to do for like my TBRs in the future, um, like the different ways. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.